Canola was planted into this pasture paddock near Katanning in the great southern region of Western Australia. While sprays were applied to control red-legged earth mites, the treatment failed to control both pests and weeds. This meant while the canola emerged, it was outcompeted by the weeds and damaged by the red-legged earth mites. Svetlana Micic, entomologist with the WA Department of Agriculture and Food, has some advice on how to avoid a situation like this on your farm. Well, first of all, you do need to monitor before you spray to make sure that A, the crop is actually emerging. And we did do that. We came out here and had a look. And the way we did that was we put two pegs a metre apart and counted the plants between them to see if they were actually emerging. We noticed that there was a lot of uh, red-legged earth mites on the germinating canola seedlings. There was about eight per plant. Um, so then we applied the sprays and we did come back uh, two days later to have a look again and found that there was no difference. So specifically, what are you looking for when you come out again? You're looking to see if there's any more damage to the plants, if there's um, any more crop loss. So you count the plants before and then you do another count after and if you're noticing that you're losing plants then you probably do need to do something about it. One of the things to look at is the chemical choice to make sure that the chemical you've chosen will actually control the pest especially if, it, um, if there is a history of that pest having resistance to insecticides. So in this case we knew that the red-legged earth mites were potentially resistant to chemicals and so when we looked back at our chemical choice, we realised that the chemicals we'd chosen were ones where there was a history of resistance. If you suspect that you have a pest that's uh, resistant to the sprays that have been applied, contact your local agronomist or local Department of Agriculture office. And if you do have resistance in red-legged earth mites, do contact your local Department of Agriculture office and we can arrange for them to be tested. Another thing you could look at is the weather patterns at the time of spray application. Um, in this case, it didn't rain um, after we applied the sprays. Uh, for a lot of the spray applications, you need about two hours of drying time, at least. One of the things to do is to actually go back to the chemical manufacturer with the batch number and actually give them a call and have a chat if you've um, taken care of every other possibility, because there may be um, issues with the time of application with that batch and other factors. Svetlana says another thing to keep in mind is there may be multiple pests doing damage in your paddock. More than one pest is a definite possibility. The spray that we've chosen here um, was only for the control of red-legged earth mites, but when we did go back and look at the paddock, we did find that there were other caterpillar pests and weevil pests which weren't controlled with the rates that were applied. Spray coverage is an important part of efficacy for pests. So if there is a lot of stubble on the soil surface or a lot of green plant material that pests can hide under, that can affect the um, way that the sprays work. And especially if the spray is a contact spray where the insect or needs to come into contact with the spray to die.